Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another edition of Works That Never Seem to Work, at least on disc, because this is a particularly fascinating case that I think should make for some interesting discussion. The work in question is Verdi's La Traviata. Now, La Traviata always works on stage. It's one of the most popular operas ever made. I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It, the only problem it has, dramatically speaking, is the very long middle act. I mean, it really is quite long. It's in a couple of parts. It takes, you know, you know, it's it's a big deal. It does. It has to get get around with a lot of plot stuff. You know what I mean? But it's a glorious opera. I mean, I've seen it many times. I never fail to be entranced by it on stage and devastated by the third act. And I played in the pit orchestra several times. And even as a bass drumist, you know, where this is where Mahler got the funeral march at the beginning of the third symphony. You know, bum. Da 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 da, da 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 da, da 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 da, and that's that's straight out of Act Three of La Traviata. I mean, it's a it's a it's a topos. It's standard Italian operatic death music language, but Mahler used that. I mean, that's a whole other topic. It's fascinating. Anyway, it's it's an incredibly gorgeous opera. It's a masterpiece. What is there to say except that it seems to have a curse? Maybe that's another topic, you know, works that are cursed. The problems with it are all built around the fact that you have three stellar star roles. You've got Giorgio, Germont, and Alfredo, and then you've got, of course, Violetta. And the character of Violetta is one of the most all-encompassing, amazing, fantastic roles for a... a Soprano. I mean, it's just, you know, one of one of the, the glories of the lyric stage. On disc, why doesn't it work better? I mean, it's not that we don't feel what we're supposed to feel. It's that the, the, the role itself seems to just eat up the Sopranos who take it on. I mean, think about it. There is the, the Traviata that should have been, the mature Callas Traviata, that Maria Callas people search for, like the Holy Grail. There's the Lisbon one and the London one and the this one and the that one, but she never did it. She did it when she was young, but not in her mature, full Kunstdiva role. And of course, there is the role itself, which which is, 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 is it a Kunstdiva role? That is one for a singer who may be a little bit lacking in technique or voice, but who has tremendous insight and artistry and dramatic ability and the ability to act through the voice? Or is it a stimmdiva role where you just go out there and sing it as beautifully as you can and don't worry because the music itself is so emotional that it's going to carry the message along whether or not you, you add anything of yourself to the part anything that makes people think that you're actually dying of tuberculosis out there. The music does it for you. Stimmdiva is German. It means voice diva versus an art diva. That's the great, the great conflict in the operatic realm. And that comes smashing head to head in the role of Violetta in La Traviata. So uh, you know, we, 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 there is that. It, it's almost an impossible role to encompass. The range of emotions, sadness, gaiety, nobility, suffering, death, hedonism. I mean, you've got to be able to do it all. Absolutely all of the heartbreak, you know. I mean, it's, oh my goodness, it's just, it's just unbelievable. It really is. It's, and it's made even more mythological because it's based on a true story. And the fact that it's based on a true story, the fact that, you know, Maria Callas circled around at her whole career but never quite landed on it in the ideal way um, is just is, is something that overshadows every other recording of it, every other performance of it. And it's really very interesting because the Maria Callas people will tell you for certainty, oh, if only and you know Antoinetta Stella hadn't been hired by EMI to do it instead of Callas, we would have had the ideal Traviata. Well, we don't know that. She could have been in crappy voice when she finally got hired to do it. Who knows? I mean, the Callas people probably wouldn't have cared, but we don't know. 
What never happened, we don't know. I mean, that's a fairly logical position, but Maria Callas fans are seldom fairly logical. But the reason it's cursed is that the other recordings always seem to have had a problem too, in that so many of them were made just at the time when the singer was past their prime. I mean, you know, Renata Scotto, I, a Quince Diva, Beverly Sills, a Quince Diva, both of them, both recorded the role too late in their careers. Because, you know, it's one of those cursed things. You know, you, you want to do it, but, but the problem is that by the time you're ready to do it, your voice may be shot. You know, but by the time you feel mature enough to do it, I mean, it's, it's, it's that kind of conundrum. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. I, you know, Joan Sutherland did it twice. She was the ultimate shtim diva. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the first time with, you know, no, no, no consonants whatsoever. And later she acquired a few. Um, so maybe it was better. I don't know, but you have her husband as the conductor who nobody liked, you know, doing that stuff. Then you have Carlos Kleiber with Kotrubash, which is probably the closest to the ideal recording on DG, or Anna Moffo on RCA, who some people swear by because she had a gorgeous voice in her youth. It's amazing. There are all of these what ifs and almosts and not quites. Um, it, it seems to be one of those pieces that never quite works, at least on recordings. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a no-fail smash hit for the soprano if she's not dead, before it starts, that is, she's dead at the end. Um, you know, it, live, it never fails to make an impression. But in real life on records, on, on recordings, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think there's any defect in the music. I think the defect is in humanity, <laughs> in, in the inability of most sopranos to really take on the role um, in their prime, to give it everything. And there's this, this unreasonable expectation, I think, that, that a soprano who really does the role correctly will be dead at the end. You're not getting into it if you survive the performance. I mean, that's that's kind of the... The, the impression I get reading criticism, especially from, you know, opera people, you know, they're, they're very unreasonable. They expect singers to die for their art. They truly do. And this is one of those roles where, you know, dying for your art is the whole point. And they think, I think they get a little bit too literal about it. So for my money, the fault is certainly not Verdi's. It's, it's inherent in the, in the human, human verisimilitude of the, of, of the character that he draws and the difficulty most artists have encompassing the range of this character. I mean, it makes it simply an endlessly fascinating work. I mean, one that you want to listen to over and over and over again because everyone gets close to it, approximates it in some way, right? And so you want to see how close they come to that ideal. But that ideal is a very real construct in most listeners' minds. It's out there. It's out there and it's by definition unattainable. And, and part of the fun is arguing and bitching about how the soprano in question doesn't attain what's unattainable. So uh, I, I, I think La Traviata is a very, very special case in the history of, of works that never quite seem to work, at least on disc. I'm very curious to know what you think about this issue. I, it's, it's a very interesting question in the musical firmament. And if you're new to opera and you're new to you know, Verdi or La Traviata, if you don't know it, um, you should be aware of the fact that this, this unreasonable expectation, this mythology surrounds this particular role. And you can decide for yourself, you know, where you come down on that issue. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.